G'day from Australia and welcome back to the sixth in this series. This time we're listening to duo art popular music. From 1932, the Aeolian Duo Art Company was the only remaining pneumatic reproducing piano company, which reached a new peak and then declined after the Great Depression in 1929. They licensed several other companies to use their system, including Steinway, who sold some of the most upmarket models. The word, the word duo art actually means just dual control, which means that it controls the piano keys and it controls the required velocity to play exactly as the recording pianist had done. Now, picture one here shows what I like to um, use as a reference. It shows the duo art system on an upright deck piano. Now over the years, that's a, uh, over the years, several improvements were made. And after 1932, which was um, uh, when the Ampico company went out of a business, the best of all the systems were gradually incorporated into the duo art. Now we'll have a look at picture two. Picture two, two shows a more modern uh, duo art system um, <clears throat> uh, with an integrated design. It's almost undetectable with the covers closed, except for a very small increase in the length of the piano. And this was the culmination of many years of development and the last of the old style uh, re reproducing pianos. Now, um, I'll show you a video which, which um, demonstrates one Steinway model which was capable of both playing duo art or welt rolls plus the standard uh, piano player rolls. But this was a last ditch attempt to compete with the electric phonograph and the radio, after which the company, that's duo art, went out of business by 1985. So we'll just have a look at this piano. This is a unique one, um, which was, you know, which could do everything. Right, well now, for today's playlist of popular tunes, uh, you can see the link in the chat box. Uh, you can download this and request any song you'd like to hear, and I'll play these as appropriate for the theme, or else at the end of the presentation. So, if you have a look at that link. Now, we'll play our first tune now, um, which is the song Always. It's a 1925 composition written by Irvin Berlin, and it was written as a wedding gift for his wife. Uh, this song was very popular, sung by Deanna Durbin in the movie Christmas Holiday. So here's always for you.
Very good. Well, here's a song that was popular for over many years. Um, it's called Blue Moon. And actually, surprisingly, it was written in 1934. Uh, it's a Richard, Ro Richard Rogers and Lawrence Hart tune. And it was played by everybody from Al Bowley in those early days to Elvis Presley in more recent years. Uh, so it's been sung by very art many artists. So here's um, Blue Moon.
one of the things I've noticed in the the old time piano players used to often play little trills or little rhythms between between pauses in the tune. They they don't seem to do this nowadays at all. But uh, they had some exquisite little routines that they would run. Uh, anyway, the next tune is one we all know, The Charleston. The Charleston was written in 1923 by James Johnson. It's a well-known song, and uh, James was a well-known ragtime pianist for a dance of that name uh, at that time. So here's The Charleston. Now, the next tune was used by Paul Robeson and made very popular uh, uh, at that time. It's a Tin Pan Alley song called Lazy Bones. It was written in 1933 by Hoagie Carmichael. So um, we'll have Lazy Bones. Right. Thank you.
Now, <clears throat> Irving Berlin was a very, very popular composer and quite a prolific composer too. So I'll put the next two songs together. The first one is called Remember, and it was written in 1925. Uh, this particular uh, song, this role was played by a Phil Omen. And the second song that is called The Song Is Ended. And uh, I say both of those are written by Irving Berlin. So first of all, remember.
exactly at the halfway mark so this is a good time to have a break for five minutes and perhaps a quick cuppa it's also a good time to have a look at the playlist in the chat box there and uh, submit any requests that you might have uh, that we can play before we continue so we'll have an intermission and then we'll come back with some more songs <laughs>
Well, I hope you had a good break. Uh, remember, all of these, all of this music was recorded on paper rolls back in the nine, mostly in the 1920s and the 1930s, and they were recorded for reproduction pianos, reproducing pianos. So um, uh, a lot of those rolls are non-existent anymore, and the reproducing pianos were only a, a small number of the total um, uh, player pianos that were available. So th there's probably not a lot of reproducing of the original reproducing pianos still available. Anyway, here's another oldie sung, which was often sung by Al Jolson, and uh, it's played on this role by a Harvey Madden, and it's called Sunny Boy. And it's 1928, and uh, it was written by Ray Henderson, Buddy De Silva, and Lou Brown. So here's Sunny Boy for you. Uh, here's a song that was sung by Ethel Waters at the Cotton Club in New York uh, in the 1930s. Uh, it, it's called Stormy Weather. It was written in 1933 by 
Harold Arlen and Ted Kohler. So, uh, stormy weather. One of my favourite actresses uh, was Janet Gaynor, and Janet <clears throat> worked for Fox Studios in the 20s and 30s, and she was there in the 20s at the same time as Shirley Temple, and they were both like sisters, Janet being the older sister and Shirley being the younger one. Now, one of the films that she made was called Sunny Side Up, that's Janet Gaynor. And uh, uh, this is the a tune from it um, called Sunny Side Up. And it was written in 1929 by B.G. De Silva, Lou Brown and Ray Henderson. So um, here's Sunny Side Up.
another song that was made popular by Al Johnson is Swanee. And surprisingly, it's a much older tune than I thought. It was written in 1919 by George Gershwin, so he would have been just a young man at that time. So uh, anyway, here is Swanee. There was a film made in 1929 called Gold Diggers of Broadway and uh, one of the popular tunes from that uh, movie was Tiptoe Through the Tulips which is which was 1929 Joe Burke was the was the um, composer
Here's a Gershwin song that's almost been forgotten. I could, couldn't find, very difficult to find information on this song. Uh, Where is the Man of My Dreams? It's a 1922 song written by George Gershwin. We've just got time for one more. So we'll finish up with an oldie but a goodie, The Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. Thank you. 
Well, if there were any requests, this is the time that I could play them. But uh, we haven't any at this stage. Uh, <clears throat> next week, we'll look at duo art classical music. Uh, so you can select requests from those. If you've created any MIDI files yourself, uh, you can email me or post them on your OneDrive Google Drive. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I can play them for you on a real piano. Well, that's all for today. Because of Easter, I hope to be back in two weeks at the same time with more music and any special requests from the audience. By the way, if you've been enjoying these series, can I ask you to click the like, subscribe or follow button uh, to encourage me to continue? Uh, otherwise, it's a bit uh, disheartening. <laughs> so that's all. Thank you very much for being there. Bye for now.